guys welcome to my channel i want us to have a quick look um, at reynolds syndrome or reynolds phenomenon um, or sometimes it's also called reynolds mm -hmm. disease so i'll be reading uh, from patients.info which is uh, a very reliable source of information uh, that we usually give to patients or we usually recommend for patients to get information about their health so usually, we typically reuse uh, patient.info and the NHS website. So let's crack on. Uh, the first question would be, what is Reynolds syndrome or Reynolds phenomenon? As you can see, you can see this properly um, used image of, of someone's hands and fingers. So Reynolds disease or Reynolds syndrome is something that typically affects our fingers our toes, the tip of our nose, our ears, you know, places in the body where we have what we call end arteries, they are exposed end arteries. So end arteries means the artery ends, so there, are, there is no, there are no, you know, collateral or supporting blood, blood, blood flow, or, you know, supporting circulation. So if anything happens to that part of the body that is supplied by an end vessel or an end artery, if anything blocks that, then what it means is that that part of the, that tissue or body parts can die or can undergo ischemia or necrosis. So that's how you're going to understand the principle of what happens in Reynolds disease. So in the tip of the fingers, we have end arteries, which means if anything blocks that vessel, you don't have blood coming from other blood vessels to, to perfuse or supply blood to that part of the body. So Reynolds Syndrome or Reynolds disease is more common in the cold period, so you can see how to deal with Reynolds disease in the winter months, which are the essentially the cold parts of the year. So Reynolds syndrome essentially happens when there are spasms. So the blood vessels in these parts of the body, these end arteries or end vessels go into spasm, okay, usually temporary spasm. And what happens when you have that spasm is that it cuts off blood flow to that part, typically the fingers and toes, sometimes the ears and nose because these areas are also exposed to cold. So there's a temporary spasm that leads to cut off of blood flow and that cut off of blood flow uh, produces pain and some other funny sensations like tingling, pins and needles and also discoloration. So the, you, know, you, you can see your fingers going pale and then eventually they turn blue when, when the oxygenated blood flows back into that finger or toe, it gets bluish and then eventually turns pink, which is uh, what it's meant to be. So reading here, the first sentence says, Reynolds phenomenon is a condition, it's a common condition in which blood vessels in the extremities, your fingers, toes, ears or nose overreact to cold or stress. So when we feel stress psychologically, physically, this can also trigger Reynolds disease for people who are prone, more prone to it, especially. During the winter months, how can Reynolds sufferers manage their condition? So let's look at the brief statistics. In November 2022, two years ago, a survey by the Sclerodema and Reynolds UK revealed the impact of rising energy costs on 1,600 people living with Reynolds. So you can imagine the cost of living means people would not have adequate heating. People will try to conserve energy by turning, turning off their heating and probably trying to double up with their, um, you know, with their blankets, uh, duvets and things like that, clothing. You know, and what it means is that people who have Reynolds would tend to suffer more in the cold periods. 77% reported having more Reynolds attack due to stress caused by the cost of living crisis. That's enormous. 76% experienced a painful Reynolds attack due to being too worried about increased energy bills to turn the heating on. That's just dreadful. It's really dreadful that people have to, you know, live through these kind of harsh conditions because of the economic uh, strain. Previously has been said, so Reynolds is a condition where blood vessels in your extremities overreact to cold temperatures or stressful situations. While anyone can be affected, it's more common in women than men. And it typically begins between the ages of 15 and 30 years. So in the young, it typically begins when we're young. 
for those who are you know uh, predisposed to developing this condition now with Reynolds your blood vessels go into a temporary spasm and block the blood flow to those extremities that are supplied uh, by by blind by by end arteries or you know by blindly terminating blood vessels blood flow because the blood flow will, be, will initially be deoxygenated which means lack of oxygen that you notice what we call cyanosis bluish discoloration of those parts of the body and then eventually they become pink where they now become perfused with blood that carries oxygen so that's but not everyone goes through this spectrum it can vary but this is the typical spectrum of how the Reynolds disease presents when it happens. Now, how do we manage Reynolds? Or well, before we go into management of Reynolds, I want to mention um, that. Where is that? Yes. Yeah. So if we look at this highlighted part, we can see that there are typically two forms of Reynolds. We have what we call the primary Reynolds or the idiopathic. Idiopathic in medicine means we haven't really found a reason why this patient is predisposed to having Reynolds. So we call it primary or idiopathic. And then we have the secondary uh, Reynolds where we have an identifiable cause. We can say, yeah, this patient is having Reynolds very likely because they have this other condition or this other predisposition. So in primary Reynolds, which is the more common form of Reynolds, usually it's milder, the symptoms are typically milder, um, the pain, the tingling typically lasts you know, sh for a shorter duration, and obviously the recovery is much better. And the risk of complications is usually far less. So risk of complications, which is essentially death of the tissues that are, that are, that are compromised. Uh, what we call ischemic necrosis is far less compared to the secondary one because in the secondary one uh, usually there are more severe more prolonged uh, symptoms and usually they have a much higher risk of developing complications ischemia and conditions that can typically present with secondary renals are what we call uh, sclerodema you know the, the limited uh, sclerodema or crest syndrome and then the lupus, systemic lupus uh, erythematosus, SLE, can also present with Reynolds disease or Reynolds syndrome. Now let's go back up to how we can manage Reynolds. So typically, managing Reynolds for people who are predisposed to it involves, <coughs> excuse me, it involves protecting oneself from the triggers. So from cold, if cold is your is your, is your trigger, you try to cover up, wear thick gloves, you know, wear your head warmers, um, you know, protect yourself. Uh, you can wear a scarf to wrap around your face, your cheek, your nose, uh, wear well-fitting shoes, winter socks to protect your toes, you know, um, so it's, uh, it's about, it's about, you know, dressing properly to do for the weather to keep yourself warm and protected. For people who have more severe forms of renals, typically in secondary secondary renals who, who, who might need to be considering medications that help to reduce those vascular spasms. Some other things that typically will help uh, with renals are, are measures that will try to reduce or control your stress levels. So reduce your um, anxiety or anxiousness, um, try to maybe do some job work adjustments to cut down physical and psychological stress that, that is you know associated with work uh, smoking cessation so we'll typically we're advising people to stop smoking smoking cessation generally helps to improve overall health because smoking comes with a litany of health risk but of course in people with renals because smoking can also cause vascular problems if you have Reynolds, it's very much advised that you need to cut, you need to actually stop smoking. Exercise on its exercise as well and proper diet are other ways that one can improve their circulation and overall health. Mindfulness to help with anxiety, depression, burnout um, are usually very helpful. And now when should you see your GP? It's obviously you see your GP when you're struggling or when you think something else could be going on. So especially when we talk about the secondary secondary forms of uh, Reynolds, 
where something else, another underlying medical condition could be predisposing one to having these renal disease. So uh, for sclerodema, for instance, if you're having problems with, if you notice your skin is very thick, excessively thick skin, if you're having difficulty swallowing, if you notice um, purplish rash, what we call angio, um, what we call uh, telangiestasia. So if you notice some kind of vasculitic, vascular, like blood vessels, streaks of blood vessels on your skin, uh, telangiestasia, things like that. Or if you're worried about any other problems, you, you know, lethargy, feeling tired most of the time, joint aches and, and joint swellings, you need to be seeing your GP uh, who would assess you and then decide if they need to refer you to a rheumatologist at the hospital. And typically the rheumatologist might, even the GP might consider start placing you on this medication, the Fedipine, uh, which helps to open up, keep the blood vessels open uh, because it's a calcium channel blocker. So it helps to, you know, prevent those um, spasms in your blood vessels. Another thing would be how can people obviously survive, especially with economic strain. So thankfully in the UK, there are, uh, at least there are some government support in terms of benefits. For people who are on the lower spectrum of income, uh, which I believe a lot of us fall within because generally everyone is struggling at this point, breaking the bank uh, to survive. So we've come to the end of this um, very short discussion or presentation on Reynolds disease. Um, if you think it's been helpful, uh, kindly leave a like, subscribe to this channel for, because you, uh, I'll be bringing up more topics for us to rub minds and explore. Um, thanks for watching.